Hey everybody, this is John Lamazny, and tonight I'm going to use Inkscape in order to um, first and foremost illustrate the three-dimensional box tool, and secondly to uh, make a sketch that's sort of like a, a play on ideas. So the three-dimensional box tool is something that I don't use very often, but anytime I need a uh, three-dimensional box it's it's the perfect tool so the way that it works is um, you select it and you draw out a cube on screen and then you get some settings that you can modify right so um, you have angle settings up here and you have uh, the ability to uh, turn on or off uh, those uh, dimensions. So the one that I want to make is uh, going to be one that we're looking down on. So I'm going to start down low and there is my cube, a more or less perfect cube. So I'm going to bring that to the center of my screen. I'm going to convert it to paths because I don't want to use the uh, tools in the um, that are part of the uh, three-dimensional box tool anymore I want to um, just use this as shapes so whenever you want to take either an ellipse or a spiral or anything that you make with one of these tools on the sidebar here um, anytime you want to take those and just make them plain shapes as opposed to editable uh, specifically shape editable shapes you convert the path and uh, what I'm gonna do now that I've done that is I'm gonna select this t this uh, shape which is as you can see in my uh, info bar here it says group of six objects I want to ungroup it which is uh, a control U on my keyboard there's lots of ways to do that but um, control U is the way that I usually do it and I'm gonna make this a bit more gray. I'm going to make this a bit more gray. And I'm going to make this a bit more gray. But I'm going to keep the relative values. Um, and the reason for that is because I want this to look like a sugar cube. So I'm going to now select these and I'm going to add a stroke uh, to each of the edges of each of the shapes. And the way that I do that is by holding down shift and clicking on black, you can see that it gave a black stroke on the edge. Now I could go into the fill and stroke dialog up here and I could uh, fine tune those settings, but this is actually exactly what I want. I'm actually going to make this more of a white. Let's see how this light gray does. Yeah, that's nice. Now I'm going to make this a little bit lighter too something more like that yeah and finally make this a little bit lighter too that looks more like a sugar cube now in order to uh, give this some special attention I'm gonna create a circle around it I'm gonna hold down control as I make the circle uh, because I want to constrain the ratio of the height versus the width I'm going to take that and put it on top of the uh, sugar cube and now I'm going to use my uh, lower selection to bottom tool in order to bring that down and for right now I'm just going to give that a nice red background and also I'm going to increase the size of my stroke to 16 from 8 so it can be a nice thick stroke 
I'm going to center that. And I'm going to add two words to add some sort of quirky fun. First word is going to be um, hello with a comma. And the second word is going to be sugar. No, I will just uh, put a period on there. So I'm going to size this up a bit. Holding down control as I constrain the resize. And I want this text to be almost sort of industrial, sort of playing with the idea that you're saying something almost sensual in a um, in a uh, in an industrial way, for lack of a better term. I'm also going to show you how to change the orientation of, my, of the page. Uh, the reason being that I want it to be a vertical or portrait format rather than horizontal or landscape. Okay, so I'm gonna close that there. I'm gonna hit five on my keyboard in order to show all of that page. You can just ignore this uh, stuff over here. Matter of fact, instead of ignoring it, I'm gonna delete it. And now I'm going to take my Hello Sugar I'm going to bring it up in the uh, corner of the page, hold down Control and Resize. So as I said, I, I want this to appear almost industrial. And one of the ways that I'm going to accomplish that is by choosing just the right font for the words hello and the word sugar. So I'll select both of those. By holding down shift, I select one and then hold down shift and select the other. And you can see that I have two objects of type text in layer layer one selected. I'm going to now open up my text dialog. And I'm going to scroll to the top. Sort of navigating through my fonts there. And of course, one of the reasons I have so many fonts installed is because as a designer, it gives me more options. It gives me the opportunity to um, choose exactly the sort of flavor that I want for the text. You know, that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun too. And very often, I do not know what the font is that I want to choose before I choose it. Um, I go to Ballpark a lot. I love the way that Ballpark uh, sort of adds some irony to a non-ironic piece of text. Um, this is very possible, but Usually when I see a, a piece of text in Bebas, uh, which is a free font you can get on uh, dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com, uh, it's, it's just a beautiful font. Let me just see how it looks. So I apply and I close. Oh, that's, that's so nice. <laughs> it's so nice. And the really nice thing, too, is that the size of my circle 
uh, the, the stroke on my circle is almost exactly the same size as the uh, letters. So again, I'm going to size this up a bit, holding down control as I size up. And I'm going to size this piece of text up as well. And I want to be very particular with this. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out a guide from the um, from the ruler. Again, I'm going to do it on the other side too. So I drag out this guide and drop it on the edge of the circle. And that allows me to align pretty perfectly the edge of that R and the edge of this S. And the edge of this H and the edge of this O. I'm going to take my sugar cube and size it up from the middle. And the way that I do that is by holding down both control and shift as I size up. I'm going to move that over just a step. And I'm also going to rotate it just a bit just to make it a little bit quirky. Finally, I think that hello is a little bit too close to that circle, so I'm going to move that up. Sugar is a little bit too close to the circle, so I'm going to move it down. I'm going to leave enough white space in between the line of the background circle and the letters, almost equal to the size of the letters, a little bit more. I'm pretty happy with that. So the last thing I'm going to do, something I usually do, is to add a background. For this, I'm going to turn on a snap to page border. I go up to the corner and drag out a rectangle. I'm going to hold down shift and hit this X here to turn off that border because I don't really want the border for that outside. And I'm going to take that rectangle and move it to the bottom. And I'm also going to choose a different color for the background. Now I'm not actually happy with this color scheme that I've chosen so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a palette so that I get some help. Um, Here's the import bitmap button. It gives me this dialog where I can go into palettes. Let me bring that dialog in a bit so you can see what I'm looking at. And these are all palettes I've gotten from uh, colorlovers.com. And uh, the reason I collect them is because of things like this. I want to be able to use the palette at any time. So scrolling down, that's actually really kind of fun. That's kind of fun too. This one's really nice. I think I'll use avocado. So uh, as I said, I went to colorlovers.com, went to a palette that I liked right-clicked on the preview image and saved it to a folder on my machine called Palettes. Uh, as always, when I try to import a photo, I'll get this dialog saying, do I want to link or embed the image? Almost always, I want to link rather than embed, so I don't use up that, um, use up extra space in my SVG. So now I can, for instance, select the circle then choose the dropper tool and I can select a color. And so in this case I might choose this nice bright green. In 
the background, I'm going to do a gradient, meaning I'm going to go from one color to another. I'm going to make this a linear gradient. And when I click and drag, it allows me to uh, choose two colors in order to make that gradient. So I select this first node that I created, go into my dropper tool, and choose, uh, for instance, that color. And then I go to my second node and choose, let's say, that color. And um, maybe the lighter would be better. Yeah, that's kind of nice. So uh, now I can go back to my selection tool, select, for example, that uh, side part of the sugar cube and choose this darker color go to this side of the cube and choose this lighter color or this lighter color I think I was actually doing better with white and I can choose this uh, black and choose this slightly different dark color same thing with this bottom most. I'm going to leave. Oh no, I'll actually change that too. So by selecting the circle, changing to my dropper tool, holding down shift, and clicking on that color, it changes the color of the circle uh, to that too. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I hope I showed you a few techniques to bring some irony into your designs. Um, 3D box tool, really good for that one particular thing, really fun to use. And I hope you open up Inkscape and experiment soon. Thanks a lot.